I love being up here in the wilds of the Northern Territory. There's just something special about this place. Our target species today is the iconic sport fish, the mighty barramundi. This week we continue my epic Arnhem Land adventure. We get plenty of barramundi. Oh, or is that barra muddy? But only after a trek through the scrub and avoiding a croc or two. We go surface popping off the rocks. Oh. <laughs> and I get a very close visit from a friendly pot of whales. Our base for this adventure is right on the beach. Dippery is an Arnhem Land sport fishing lodge, so it's a huge privilege to enjoy this tropical hospitality. Just getting here is an epic journey starting in style aboard one of Air North's fleet of modern airliners. I've flown with Air North from Darwin to Millingimby, dreaming all the way of the cross-country trip from there to Dippery and the fishing that's in store for me along the lodge's two local rivers. Rivers few southerners have ever wet a line in. Every dawn in this remote wilderness brings a new adventure, new places to fish, New angles on the natural world that surrounds you. Today, my Territorian fishing mate Chris Errity and I are going to the bank. The bushy creek banks where barra lurk among the sunken branches. We start off in the easy country, keeping a keen eye out for other bank customers. But soon we're into the thick of it, with every sense on high alert for crocs and snakes and pigs and eventually barra. Okay, here looks like a good little spot. Got a group of snags, another group of snags. There's a little spot right in the middle. Not much cover, so I should be able to get a good cast in there. There he is. All oh, down that way. <laughs> Just a little black. But you can just see the power out of that big tail. Oh. <laughs> Lucky I had the, uh, the tonics on. <laughs> Got him? Yep. Good work. Uh, about 50. Yeah. This is the Glide River, eh? Pretty, the first creek. And I guess because of these neeps, the water is relatively clean, you know? While well, they're following these lures up off that snag, they can see it. Yeah. Yes. I've got one in there now. Oh! There you go. Oh, look at... There's stacks in there, eh? Oh, he's trying to get in there. <laughs> Shocking fishing, isn't it, mate? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trick is getting them off. <laughs> That's it. Drag them up the bank. Good thing about Barra, no teeth. I'm going to just hold him up like that. How good's that, eh? That side's the prettier side. Silver Barra. <laughs> Muddy Barra. Murray, muddy barramundi. You're going to get him, you get him in here. <laughs> oh, a little fella. Let's have a look at him. Okay. Yes, yeah, this little barra, about 30 centimetres and about a year old. Now, they hide right up here in these creeks. Ooh, it's just getting hit. There's yeah, we Lots could of catch, little ones there. We could it. catch 100 fish Insane. off this one spot. And, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful little fish. But with little being the operative word, we break away from the bank to get out in the boat and on the hunt for bigger game. We just moved into this beautiful little creek, crystal clear water. So we're going to deep dive the lures. This time, I'm gonna give a little atomic lure a chance. Really big bib. And what that denotes is that the lure will swim nice and deep. Just the perfect snack for a big barra. Oh yeah. Only a little bit. Oh yeah. Down deep. Liking that lure. Right on the edge. Oh, 
I think there's a few here. Oh yeah, nice. Wow, it's just double hookups, triple hookups, and they are just hungry. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Right up here on the flats. Awesome. He's having a think. Yet another valuable lesson in keeping an eye out around here. Pretty amazing. Oh. We didn't even notice the crocodile. We're fishing here, around here for about five minutes. Next minute, hey, there's a crocodile up the top there. And, and probably 20 metres from where we were casting, this beautiful big crocodiles are swaying in the shade. Amazing. When you're up these creeks and you're catching barramundi, you just forget for a moment, don't you? Ooh, nice fish. Yeah, yeah beautiful fish. Solid, isn't it? Oh, really solid. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Mm. And as the shadows grow longer, fatter, the fish start to get bigger. Well, we've come across this big corner and uh, quite a deep hole over here was sounded out. Now, we don't even have to anchor because we've got this beautiful big 80 pound Minn Kota electric on the front. It's got iPilot making sure that the motor just keeps us in this position, which is quite incredible. Oh, oh, that will go. Oh, right, just move that rod there. We've got a photo of that one. <laughs> Need a bit closer. <laughs> Made the seventies. <70s>. Finally. <laughs> Back in the 70s. Time to wake up. Not in the top end, but down around Nambucca. I've set up my Coleman camp in a spot that's handy for a super early start. And the stars are showing it's going to be a clear and sparkling day. The drive through the crisp early morning atmosphere is charged with anticipation because I'm heading for the ocean where my Quintrex cruiseabout is going to be launched as the camera boat to follow me on a more solitary sort of fishing adventure. Crystal clear and calm as a mill pond, this is the ocean at its most pacific perfection. But as I make my first cast, I have no idea what a perfect experience the ocean is about to spring on me and the crew of my Quintrex camera boat. Does it get any better than this? as close as I've ever been to whales on my Hobie. It's an incredible privilege because, especially when you're paddling, the decision to come close is not yours, but the whales. And you can't get any more intimate with the majesty of nature. Taking a breath after that awesome experience, the boys on the boat and I soon get back down to business. I'm hooked up here, mate. I think you might and it's nice a quick one-two result. That's what it's all about. Woohoo! Bent rods. <laughs> yeah, you got a bit of colour, ain't he, a little fella? But he's a start. He's the right colour. I've never caught fish on a softie, so... There you go, his first ever fish on a soft plastic, but there we go. Yes. There you go, look at that. Let's hit it on the drop. Stoked with that. That's unreal. The bottom's looking great as the Garmin sound is showing 
whole patches of fish, lots of bait out there as well. He didn't muck around, he came back and just belted it. <laughs> nice, beautiful little reds. Oh, big pearly. One of the bonuses of fishing in these sort of waters, just hooked up to a nice pearl perch and they are one of the best eating fish around. In the net. <laughs> that's a nice fish. And that's a lot of ocean for a little kayak, so you'd better take care. One of the things we're going to talk a lot about this year is to make sure that whenever you're in a boat or out on the kayak or any time you're out on the water, to always wear a life jacket. Now I've got one of these beautiful little vests on today, nice and easy, got pockets here that I can put my fishing tackle in as well. So there's so many different makes and models. It's not like the old days where you had to wear one of those big chunky yellow things. No one ever wore them. These days they come in so many different styles that they're easy to wear. Especially if you're out in a boat, make sure the kids are always got them on. And for yourself, well, take it from me, I'm going to be wearing a life jacket in all shows this year. And this one's an absolute beauty. Easy to fish, no problems, you actually forget about it, that it's even on within about five minutes of out on the water. So, always wear a life jacket. Yeah, another one. Nice. Yeah, nice one. Pearly number two. He's a stonker. Beautiful Come fish, on, buddy. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Beautiful <laughs> fish. They're big fellas, aren't they? Oh, yeah, that's a cracker. Look at that. <laughs> Cracking fish, and you can see how soft that top lip is. Very happy about that fish. That's a good catch. Especially from a Hobie out at sea. I've got a bit of, a bit of a paddle to get back in. Another new Arnhem Land Day dawns at Dippery Lodge. And today we're leaving our boat parked where it stays every night. Because straight after breakfast this morning, on the other side of that beautiful tropical beach, no matter how calm and inviting the sea is, we're going for fishing that really rocks. A little blue salmon. So the idea here, bit of broken reef out along this stretch. So all I'm going to do is do a nice long cast with this popper, get it out there as far as I can, loop it all the way back in and see what strikes. Oh, that was a popper shot. Got him. Yeah. They're loving it. Oh, there he is out there. It's coming in at a rate of knots right at my feet. Oh, there we go. Woo! A bit like catching Taylor at home, these guys. Look at that. And that's on our little bomber lure. As soon as it's been hitting the water out there, it's been getting smacked by blue salmon. We'll let this little bloke go. Oh. You can see we're fishing around a lot of structure here. Huge big boulders along this edge, but lots of broken rock all the way out, probably 50 metres worth of it out there. Every now and again, you feel your lure hitting the rock out there, and you know that it's not going to be too long before a fish jumps on, because this is the perfect ambush spot. And little did I know that I was about to be ambushed by a predator I'd rather avoid. Shark. Like it. They're a beautiful fish, but certainly not the fish we want to be catching. Oh! <laughs> And you can see that popper hanging out of his mouth. We've caught a few blue salmon. who are waiting for that elusive barramundi. Look at that, now I've got to get those trebles out of that shark without losing a finger or a toe. Look at that. Woo! He's making his way out. <laughs> Good thing is, I've got all fingers and toes, so it's great. <laughs> now the rig I'm using today is one of the new Shimano reels. It's an X-Sense overhead reel, little overhead bait caster, if you want to call it. It's got the, the uh, drag system on the side here, so you can either put less pressure or more pressure onto the fish. 
It's a high speed reel. It means every turn of the handle will bring in almost a metre of line. So a beautiful little system. I've got a, an overhead Shimano rod and I can get a nice cast. I'll cast it out this way so you get to see. It's nice and easy. Flying out, thumbs on the reel, boom. When I want it to stop, I actually put my thumb straight on the spool. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! They're a powerful fish. Oh. There he goes. And there goes another day in this wild yet peaceful paradise. Fishing with a mate in an environment like this is about as good as it gets. And you know that each setting sun holds the promise of another balmy night to be followed by yet another day of new fishing adventures. But first, there's dinner dippery style. Well, look at this for, uh, for dinner. Very special up here. The boys have been out catching mud crabs and we get the benefit. You and I might know them as a little fish that's delicious to eat, more than fun to catch, and only come face to face with them in the wild when we use them as bait to chase bigger game. But the Australian sardine is caught commercially from around the Queensland border with New South Wales to Victoria and around the gulfs of South Australia and along the southern coast of Western Australia. They can live up to nine years and grow up to 250 millimetres long, reaching maturity at around 145 millimetres in one or two years. There's a growing consensus among scientists that there are four separate biological stocks of sardines around Australia's southern coasts. And there is evidence that the southeastern Australian ecosystem, including the Great Australian Bight, is less sensitive to the harvesting of low trophic level species such as the sardine than other ecosystems worldwide. So it's not surprising that the South Australian biological stock has an estimated spawning biomass of 150,000 tonnes. Now that's a lot of sardines. The Eastern Australian and Western Australian West Coast stocks are estimated to each have a spawning mass of at least 25,000 tonne. And the Western Australian Southern Coast stock is estimated at 97,000 tonne. All of these stocks are considered to be sustainable with exploitation rates as low as 10% of the stock. Total annual catches are under 875 tonnes for the East Coast about 31,981 tonnes for Southern Australia and just under 2,000 tonnes for the combined Western Australian fisheries. Almost 35,000 tonnes is a lot of nutrition and you can find out a lot more on how to cook and enjoy fresh Australian sardines at fishfiles.com.au. It's another FRDC website with a wealth of handy information like the 700 milligrams of calcium you'll get from every 100 grams of sardine. And delicious recipes that go way beyond sardines on toast, like this one that serves them with red currants. Australia's fisheries are among the best managed in the world. However, we can't rest on our laurels and past performance. Fish stocks are constantly changing and require ongoing monitoring. You can keep up with all the current facts in the national status of Key Australian Fish Docks report any time you wish just by clicking on fish.gov.au. Check it out now and see how FRDC is all about fishing for our future. Well, I hope you enjoyed my fishing video. If you did, make sure you like it and comment below. If you're new to this channel, subscribe and tell a friend and make sure you press the notification bell so you're notified of our next video.